themselves on this team. Now, I don't know, with, with, but since they went up there to West Virginia, nobody wants to say, well, West Virginia, but since you went to West Virginia to the resort, your team has looked horrible. I think that 2013, whatever y'all did and what you had was great, and you decided to change it up and go to West Virginia, this team has looked horrible ever since they've gone. And I'm not saying the resort is called this, but this team has not looked good since it changed where it practiced during the summer. The Saints can't close out games. They find ways to lose games and all of this stuff. And when you have this kind of chronic problem, you've got to look in the mirror at yourself and say, what are we going to do? All right, today is September 28, 2016. What are the New Orleans Saints, the Who That Nation, and even us, Gonna say if this team is one and eight after the Seattle game right, or zero and nine, and these people are spending twenty five hundred, three thousand, five thousand dollars a year on season tickets, and you got this type of horrible product coming playing in that Superdome week in and week out, or you are eight weeks out of the summer, at, well ten including the preseason, and you spending this kind of hard earned money. And you put in this kind of product, and you're not going to demand from Mr. Benson, you know, you're not going to demand for your money's worth, and you're going to still go and spend this kind of money for a product like this that's mediocre at best. And I'm an accountant. Y'all better than me. Like I told my my um my um uh, my line brother who's flying out to San Diego, I said you better than me, because I'm not spending a dime on those things. They come to Atlanta or anywhere near. I'm not spending those my, my hard earned money. On this stuff, uh-uh, no, I'm not going to do it. And so the people don't demand off of their hard-earned money for a better product, and these people are billionaires and making tons of TV revenue and all of that, and that's why there's no change because, Remy, they're going to still get their share of profits from TV revenue. Mr. Benson right. is going to still make a profit this year. The Superdome is packed, can set everything. They're going to make their money. Um, 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 this man, uh, Peyton, he's going to make his $9 million a year. Drew Brees is going to make his $20-something million a year. Unless the people rise up and say, you don't make don't a change. Say, don't say rise up. That might rise work up. for they, they, they might need to rise up. They might need to rise up because whatever um, um, marching in ain't working. So whatever they need to do, so it's the people's choice. You're going to keep going for this? Then, hey, ain't nothing else you can do. And we love the team, but you got to start demanding for your money's worth. There is no other coach that would still be employed with a 14-21 and 20, 21 record like this man has over the last three years. They're, they're not, they're not going to still be employed. And certainly not if they're African-American, would they, would they still be employed? Oh, he went there. Well, and, and, and that's something to be said about this, you know, and um, it's a failing record, right, Rem? is right. And I'm not trying to say anything negatively about race and all this other stuff, and I'm not trying to start a riot, but look what they did to Lovey Smith. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, right. you give the man a couple of years and you cast him out like a swine? <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm thinking this team improved from my eyesight what I saw in the Buccaneers. But you you cast them off because Dirk Cutter, you don't want him to leave. We, we, so we don't care about you, Lovey. Let, let's keep the offensive coordinator. And exactly. if I'm looking at I'm looking at their record, it's no much better than last year, right? Okay. Right. So, I mean, you know, guys, when we look at the National Football League, it's like any large corporation and entity where there are some questionable business moves as well as questionable business practices. Um, I think with the New Orleans Saints, one of their one of the things that's very questionable to me is how. They look at people in the front office, the administration, how they really view some of the community outreach 
uh, that they have, like from people like us, Saints News Radio Network, or uh, if you look at what's going on in other uh, podcasts out there on the market as well, they do a very poor job at evaluating who is really media and who is not. You know, just because somebody has a national paper they were right for or whatever doesn't mean that they are connecting well with the the local people are who really are behind this team and want to connect with this team and cheer for this team and pay ticket prices for this team <laughs> you know it it doesn't mean that we are any less than so of these other guys and we have produced over 242 shows over the lifetime of this network. I think we have a commitment to the who that nation and we do a very good job. Um, but you don't see the saints doing, giving their commitment back to people like us as well as writers like Barry Hurstus, uh, who do, who does a phenomenal job with the big easy believer. So, you know, I'm just making a point that there's a lot of ills out there, but I think it's starting to bring some ill will if this team doesn't turn it around. And unfortunately, if you look at the schedule, I, I see uh, a lot of difficulty down the line for the New Orleans Saints. And we could see a change coming in this team pretty soon because if we look at the saints after the Chargers game, we play the Panthers chiefs, Seahawks, 49ers and Broncos and Panthers. I mean, who do we actually see beating who we have a good chance of beating other than yeah, just saying the 49ers. None of this game. The huh? saints were not right now on the Saints schedule right now. The saints are not going to be favored in none of their games for the rest of the season. Then they're going up. They have a chance against maybe San Diego, maybe Tampa Bay, and maybe San Francisco. That's it. The Saints will not be favored in none of these games at all unless there is a drastic turnaround. Because now I figured out what, while you and Rim was talking, why why Las Vegas predicted the Saints to go six and ten? Well, it's very obvious why. Under Coach Payton for these last three years, the Saints now have a 40% winning record, meaning they only win 40% of their games off their schedule at best. So 40% of 16 games is 6.4, six games. I don't even see the Saints right now at the way this team looks, and unfortunately the rash of injuries on defense. You know, I don't see, unless Drew Brees plays perfect, and the offense scores at least seven out of their eight drives and drives and put up 40 points, the Saints are not going to be able to, you know, you know, stay in these games. Now, they don't have some bloopers where the Broncos or Seattle or Carolina will come in and underestimate them and keep a game close. But because the Saints have not learned the art of winning big games in such a long period. It has been a long time. The only game the Saints won that was big was on the roads of, in Philadelphia in that divisional round in the last five years. You can't count that Giants game because that Giants game was against a, a, a New York Giants team. Outside of that, you can't even tell the last time Drew and the Saints won a big game. It has been so long, and this is what – the people are failing to realize we have not won a significant game but one time in the last five years. And this is why the people are now frustrated. The problem is not Drew. You wouldn't even be in the games if you didn't have Drew. But what the problem is is the inability at the crucial time for the defense to come through the special teams come through, and even Drew does not come through. The momentum was there, and when they threw that pick six down there in the red zone, which the Saints have been doing that time and time again, that was a problem last year, all the air in the, in the, in the Superdome went out. So you have to look at every aspect where your team is failing. The trade of Darren Sproles will go down as the dumbest, 
and worst decisions Mickey Loomis and Sean Payton ever made in life because I firmly believe a Darren Sproles and even a Jimmy Graham, you beat the Raiders and you beat the Giants and you probably beat the Falcons. One of the key drives that caused that momentum to change also was after Atlanta got the ball from the from the um, Benny Hill snafu of buffoonery that was done and scored. The next drive, Mark Ingram averaging five to six yards. Run. This man comes out and they throw the ball three straight down and <laughs> go a three and out. A three and out after you have so much success and running, running the ball. ball. Right. And that's how that game just totally went. After that, it, it went out of hand. It did get, and the Falcons took off, and that was it. That yeah. was it. You know, Mark, you know, you just, you, you have, you know, a situation with the Saints where what once was in well-balanced and well-coaching and, you know, everything that worked well, it's, it's, not, it's not working. Yeah. It's not working. And you're going to have to bring in some new coaches, you know, you're going to have to find some experts, you know, that are at because you have to look at also, and people don't like this, the age gap between these coaches and now these young 20, 21, 22, 23-year-old players. There are significant generational gaps. And the message that you convey over to this generation versus me, you, and Remy and the way our fathers were and parents were, worked for us. You can't have that, and you've grown up most of your life as older coaches used to that, and now you're trying to deal with a millennium generation or a younger generation that has been raised totally different from with the way me, you, and Remy has been raised. And so your message or whatever Bill Belichick does or his staff does, then you need to go up there and have seen your staff this possibly spend some time with him or whatever to see what he's doing, that he's able and his coaches are able to convey over the message to this new millennium group of NFL players. Because the NFL right now is suffering from mediocrity. You only have about five good teams right now. You have only two in the NFC, and we just in week three. We only just have two undefeated teams, Minnesota and Philadelphia, which is a total surprise. Then you look in the AFC, you have the traditional New England, you have Denver, and Baltimore has resurrected itself out of nowhere, and that's it. You know, so the NFL now is a a, 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 full, a league full of ups and downs. You might win this week, lose next week. You have all this mediocrity, all this average playing now, and it's showing up that they've gotten what they wanted in parity. I guess that's what they go with, and that's what we have now. Okay. All right. Okay, guys, uh, Saints win versus the Chargers, yes or no? No. No? Remy says no? What about you, Professor? No. no. Yeah. I'm, I stand with Remy. I, don't, I think they're going to go out there because Drew Brees does not play the same on the Bless you. I, I, I would love to see – bless you. I would love to see them win, <clears throat> but I can't go with the Saints right now the way they look on the road. And, and I'm telling you, go back and look at the last – Five games of Drew Brees on the road. Atlanta, Tampa Bay, Houston, Washington, and the New York Giants. And this is my problem with Drew. I'm going to be honest with you. And it's not all his fault because I don't know what the problem is with the wide receivers when they go on the road that they can't play. A lot of drop passes. But Drew doesn't look the same. His statistics are way down when he goes on the road now. Way down. And so going to San Diego, as banged up as the Chargers are, it's a game they should they should win. Will they win it? At this point, if they want to try to save their season, even their coach, is this my question to you and women? I, I just want to hear y'all thoughts. What do you think is going to happen if the Saints are one and eight after this next stretch come up after the bye or or zero and nine to Coach State? Man, look, they're already um, working it in. They're already working in the excuses to keep him on board. 
they're already bl- blaming the injuries. They're blaming everything but the coaching staff. So he's 